Long ago, there lived a man named Kweku Anansi, who had been turned into a spider by his father for his dishonest ways and trickery. After some time, Anansi grew comfortable in his spider form, but grew bored. He decided that he wanted to become a storyteller, but there were no stories in existence. His father, the sky god Nayami, owned them all, and he kept them in a golden box next to his throne. So, Anansi spun a web into the sky and paid his father a visit. Kweku Anansi, my son, you look quite different. To what do I owe the pleasure? Anansi told him of his wishes to obtain the stories kept in his box, and Nayami laughed at him. <laughs> so, you want my stories? Well, here is my price. If you can capture and bring to me Onini the python, Osebu the leopard, and the Omboru hornets, then you can have my stories. Anansi merely nodded and returned to Earth. He knew that he would have to use his famed trickery to catch these creatures. First, he went to the home of the large python, Onini. He stood outside and pretended to argue loudly so that Anini could hear him over the length of the python. The curious Anini emerged. What is all this arguing? Anansi told her that he thought she was as long as the large branch which lay on the floor nearby, but that no one else would believe him. Onini agreed to measure herself against it, but Anansi said that she must be tied to it to get an accurate reading. Anini consented. Sure, okay then. And Anansi carried the stick away hey. with the python tied to it and delivered it to Nayame. Next, Anansi went to track down the vicious leopard, Osebo. During the night, he dug a deep hole outside of Osebo's home. In the morning, Osebo left the home and fell into it. Help me! Help! Anansi approached the pit and called down to Osebo, offering help. He told the leopard that he would spin a web to pull him out, but he must wrap himself in it. Well, okay then. Asabo did so and was trapped in the sticky spider web. And Nancy carried him away to his father, Naomi. Finally, Anansi found the hive of the Mboro hornets. They were said to have the most powerful stings in all of Africa. Anansi cut a small hole into a gourd and hollowed it out then made a plug for the hole. He then collected some water on a banana leaf. He poured half of the water onto himself, and then the other half onto the hive. The hornets flew out, furious at someone ruining their home. Who did this? Was it you? The soaking wet Anansi exclaimed that the rainy season had come early and suggested hiding in the hollowed out gourd. Ah, rain! Quick! Everyone inside! One by one, they flew in. Anansi plugged the hole up and carried his hornet-filled gourd with him on his final visit to Nayami. Nayami could not believe his eyes. Anansi, I thought I'd given you an impossible task, but you have managed to outsmart all of these legendary beasts. Not only will I hand these stories over to you, but I will make you the god of all stories. As the god of all stories, you should share these and pass their wisdom on. Learning that there was wisdom in the stories, Anansi became greedy and wanted to keep them all to himself. He transferred the stories into a nondescript pot and then spent some time searching for the perfect hiding place for them. He eventually came across a tall, thorny tree. No one will look for it up there, he thought to himself. And so, holding the pot, he began to climb the tree. By this time, Anansi had a young son of his own named Ntakuma. Anansi did not realise but Ntakuma had been following him and was now watching his father struggle to climb this large tree whilst holding on to the pot. Anansi was slipping and making almost no progress when his son called up to him. He suggested to his father that he tie the pot onto himself using the vines from the tree, allowing him to climb more easily. He did so and quickly climbed to the top of the tree but, as he was hiding the pot, he had a realisation. 
the pot could not have contained all wisdom if his son still had to offer advice for his climb. He took the pot in his hands and threw it to the ground. It smashed open. A storm came and the stories and wisdom were dispersed all over the world. The wind blew some into the sky and the rain washed some into the rivers. He had learned that wisdom was best when it was shared.